So uh, I will be more focusing on to the uh, regulatory framework uh, uh, with respect to the EVs. Uh, Alok has mostly covered on to the software. So probably I have a couple of slides on the software complexity as well, which he did cover for me, thanks to him. But however, I will try to focus more on uh, uh, other stuff as well. So this is what probably we will uh, go into that. Why do we need to have a regulation, fr regulatory framework, particularly in terms of automotive, be it EV or be it any other uh, 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 systems. And then how is the shift is taking place in all of these automotive systems? And then probably the uh, uh, discussions on the regulatory framework. So when we look at it, it's basically always there is a tug of war between the regulatory frameworks and the industry. You know, regulatory framework would put something in place. The industry would try to implement that. Then some back and forth would always take up and then that's how the systems get evolved over the time. And of course, the consumers would always look at the certification agencies first towards the uh, 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 developed uh, industry as well. So when we look at in the shift in the uh, uh, automotive industry, earlier everything was mainly based on the quality uh, approach. How exactly is my system, is how reliable it is, whether all my systems are secure, whether they are easy to use, whether you know they are effective, efficient. But now the shift is really taken place in terms of the risk-based approach. You know, whether is there any really risk involved in my automotive system? How safe the systems are? How secure the systems are? Okay, probably when I'm driving a system, it could be EV or a standard vehicle. How safe am I? Will my braking will work uh, always? You know, will there be any, if I'm using a cruise control in my system, and if I apply a brake, actually the brake will get applied or not. You know, that's how the safety and security is really going to uh, uh, play a major role. So the risk-based approach is really going to help in terms of designing the better and better systems, probably making them safe and the uh, secure systems. So when we look at the uh, automotives, you know, as Alok mentioned in the earlier uh, uh, session, the automotive systems are very complex. And of course, the software also plays an important role in terms of the complexities because majority of the things are getting updated and getting control through the softwares. So be it any systems, highly critical, non-critical systems, but then of course the process standards, like probably the 26262s or 21434 for cyber security or the functional safety standards, really plays an important role in terms of the development of the systems. So how do we exactly make sure that the, all the systems are safe and secure? Because nowadays when we are talking about all this connectivity of the system, we are talking a lot on the ADAS, of course the EVs are coming into the picture, probably he raised one more point is the OTA. You know, when there is a security becomes a main concern and also the cyber security also uh, uh, plays an important role. So then how do we exactly make sure that uh, the systems are safe? and also the systems are very secure. So it probably comes up with the start with the functional safety on the left hand side and on the right hand side it's basically the cyber security really comes into the picture. Where the different process standards like 21434 really going to help you in terms of designing the systems more secure and probably 26262 is mainly towards the uh, functional safety of it. But when we go for the actual implementations uh, of the particular systems, from the safety point of view, it becomes the hazard and risk analysis. Basically make sure that find out all kinds of hazards, all kinds of risks present in your application, and then try to find out the solutions against it and then design the systems. So the regulatory framework would be really going to help to find out as much as risks, as much as potential problems present in, 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 an, in an automotive system and then make sure that implement those into the uh, uh, systems. Similarly, from the security point of view, it's the threat analysis and the risk assessment. Can anyone really take a control of my vehicle? Probably if you all go to the YouTube and you know there is a Jeep vehicle hacking incident, you just search for Jeep vehicle hacking, you would really see that how exactly the uh, over the phone call, he takes the control of the engine uh, and, and control the whole stuff. So then it basically becomes the uh, safety critical implementations. It's basically electric, uh, electronics implementations. If it is a safety, then you are different levels. If it is a security, 
then again it becomes the different levels. But overall we need to make sure that the systems are safe, that means defense against the random and systematic failure to protect it and also they are very secure. Secure in the sense means negligent and willful actions to protect the devices and the facilities. No one should be able to control my vehicle from the outside world. Of course, the main horizontal certification framework is all it depends, you know, when we look at any vehicle systems, we have a number of uh, uh, subsystems and every subsystem would go with different kinds of an approaches. Like it could be security, it could be system approach, it could be quality management and make sure that that matrix is fulfilled for each and every system within the vehicle. It could be your EV, EV systems or could be any non-EV systems as well. So what are these basically then, when we look at from the uh, international standards perspective of it, when we look at any vehicle, we see a lot of uh, subsystems involved in it. It could be related to electronics, could be related to mechanical, could be related to only the hardware, but everything needs a complete certification framework within that. So if you look at the vehicle committees, of course, the multiple uh, uh, countries are getting involved in this. USA is one of the main uh, driving of this, Canada, uh, Europe. So you can look at the multiple standards and the technical committees who are basically working on to this and make sure that there is a complete regulatory framework is been taken place so that the systems are built very safe and secure. So again, there are different AIA standards also. Some of them are related to the EVs, like probably this list of the uh, numbers I can see here, which starts from 38 to 102 to uh, others. These are all related to the EV-related uh, uh, regulatory frameworks, which ensures that the systems are built very correctly. No safety problems, no security problems. And also then there are multiple uh, subsystems which have been basically getting into the uh, scenarios and ensure that each subsystem or the each system systems gets through the certification framework to make sure that they meet the uh, proper requirements. So also when it comes to uh, say for example in terms of EVs, whether in terms of the charging infras or the uh, battery management systems, we do see a lot of IEC standards coming into the picture. The IEC and ISO have came up with a different list of standards which we need to basically go through comply, get the regulatory framework, uh, uh, get the regulatory uh, compliances and make sure that the systems are built. Because we can't just say, okay, our product is perfectly working until and unless we have the evidences against those certification frameworks. So probably a wide range of standards, like it could be uh, IS 17017 or also then Indian B BIS has came up with their own standards as well. BIS has its own list of standards for the EVs. So then probably, which again goes towards the connectors and the other uh, aspects of it. So one more thing is, when we talk about all of these systems where it starts connecting it, the data privacy also plays an important role. We need to make sure that there is no data leakage takes place or no one is able to penetrate into the systems. So probably one of the cases took place in the uh, uh, China's smart EV maker where there was a violation of the data privacy. And then of course there would have been uh, multiple uh, uh, challenges, multiple uh, uh, scenarios, multiple investigations took place into this. But such scenarios really shouldn't be taking, uh, taking up whenever there is a system design or whenever there is a system development takes place uh, uh, with respect to the EVs or any kind of uh, uh, automotive system. And of course, these standards are going to have those protection laws also. In, in terms if something goes wrong really, or if something is going wrong, then of course there are protection uh, laws against those, uh, probably the criminals I can say, or uh, uh, issues which going on within the systems. So overall probably, uh, to get into this, we need to build this expertise across the uh, uh, level. Probably in the morning sessions, there was always been a discussion on the skills. Where do we have the skills in terms of, you know, the regulatory framework, the manufacturers, the OEMs, the tire one, tire two, all kinds of uh, 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 different stuff. So the 
it always needs to be start from the academics because that's the engineers who are going to come out or that's the skills which is going to come out every year and should have a knowledge on all kinds of this regulatory framework then of course the policy making uh, uh, engineers also needs to be really uh, 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 understanding about uh, all of these processes all of these issues all of this security and the safety related uh, uh, aspects of it so that is what is about uh, we being the organization we basically uh, manufacture the software tools which uh, are mainly in terms of help uh, in terms of testing of the automotive softwares which ensures that the software is meeting towards the uh, functional safety standards it could be our safety standards or it could be the uh, security standards we also collaborate with the colleges and the universities where we do a kind of a process standards training the uh, uh, trainings towards the universities and the colleges so that when the uh, 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 fresh candidates comes out he or, he or she should have a knowledge on these different uh, uh, process standards we also drive through the certification framework where we help the customers in terms of uh, uh, complying their products with respect to the different industrial process standards it could be 26262 or 21434 or any other uh, uh, safety or security uh, uh, process standards so we work with all of these uh, technology vendors we work with semiconductor domains we work with oems we work with tier 1 tier 2 vendors to make sure that to build the complete ecosystem where we build the safe and uh, uh, secure uh, system so i think uh, when i was sitting there i was watching that tv i thought that there would be the slides which would be visible but then i realized that it's a clock which i need to continuously keep tracking it so i believe i am on time so if you have any questions uh, i would be happy to answer those questions